Logitech's G900 Chaos Spectrum wireless gaming mouse provides professional-grade performance, their most accurate sensor, and innovative design features. See the URL in the description to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano, and we are here today to talk about a couch accessory. Yeah, not a couch master. Not a couch master. This is, uh, it's interesting. So this is this is the Corsair Lapdog, mm -hmm. and um, it's an odd name. It's meant to go along with their Bulldog, like home theater PC chassis. Yep. And then they obviously, you know, Corsair is a company known for being enthusiast branded, enthusiast components. It's like, okay, if you're going to build this high-end home theater PC capable mm -hmm. of 4K gaming, and they're promoting it in all those ways, how do you make it so people can game comfortably? on their TV in their living room. And it's always been this problem. We had the Phantom lap board for, uh, that was a thing that existed. Even after the company Phantom went way out, yeah. right? Like this, yeah. this Phantom board kind of existed. We had the Couch Master that you referenced at one point, mm -hmm. um, where it was essentially two foam pads that sat next to you and then a board on top with a slight angle. It had a USB hub in it and you know, went about that way. Yep. This is Corsair's answer. It's the lap dog. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's a pretty neat little device. I think so. Uh, it is a combination of uh, like keyboard dock and mouse pad and USB hub uh, and all that type of stuff. And foam lap pad. Yeah. So the, the basic idea of this is you buy this device, you can buy it by itself for was 119 bucks. Yep. Or yep. you can buy it more expensive than that if you want to pair it with a specific keyboard or mouse. They'll mm -hmm. sell it like in kind of these combos. And uh, in here, in this corner, right over here, it looks like, uh, there is a USB output and a power. That, that's the USB uh, input. Uh, well, I no, guess no. both. That is the output. It's a USB is connection the yep. and power input. And then on the other side of the corner, you have a pair of uh, an additional USB 3s. Right. Uh, so you can plug like jump drives in there or your cell phone. That's what they mentioned on our site. Headphones. So, headphones. Like if you have USB headset, uh -huh. you connect there. Uh -huh. Uh, but yeah, if you want to charge your phone, your tablet, yep. or whatever, yep. uh, it's just two additional ones in there. I mean, then like we've got this, we've got our keyboard and our mouse. You know, you guys can see plugged into this thing, um, and so those are all connected internally. It's one of the things I really like about it is it's very clean in terms of how it looks. Yep. Right. The the keyboard cabling is plugged into the dock in this corner. The mouse cable there's, is plugged into this. This there's way. There's room behind this top plate here for everything yeah. to just be kind of folded up and just stuck in there. Right. Yep. Uh, and it's just, and it's the same exact, like extruded, anodized, brushed aluminum kind of uh, finish as the keyboard. So it just, it looks like the keyboard was just designed to be right. in this thing. Um, it's really, it's really neat. And now, I, I don't want to say it only works with Corsair keyboards, but it's only designed to work, to work with Corsair keyboards. Right, right. Uh, specific Corsair keyboards, I guess, too. There's uh, the families of K70, K65. Yes. Essentially. Yes. I think. You never know if any other kind of keyboard is going to fit. Right. Right. It is a very it tight. It would have to be a very specific coincidence yeah. of manufacturing dimensions. Right. Right. Because it is it. extremely tight tolerance, just so that it looks like the installed Corsair keyboard is just like seamless. Yeah. And the right. installation process is pretty simple, right? You you uh, it comes with like a, a, a hex screw essentially, right? Yep. They're actually right there. Here's the driver. It, oh yeah, that's neat. And it's it builds built it into the bottom. Builds it into the bottom, so you don't so lose you it. So this is actually uh, really nice. Little hex key screwdriver thing, right? Yeah. Um, and then you just use it to remove the screws around the perimeter of you remove the you back. Just, yeah. Uh, and uh, the, or I guess I call it the top. This is where your cable management kind of gets hidden. Uh-huh. Uh, and it supports both the 10 keyless and the full size keyboards as well. Right. There's a little adapter plate that's also brushed aluminum that comes yeah. pre-installed. And so if you look here, like you can kind of see the like we've got the full size keyboard in there. Yep. Um, and so you don't get one thing that's interesting, you don't gain any mouse surface. If you when had you have a, a ten uh, keyless design, I mean, you I guess kinda, if, if you wanted to run the mouse over onto the aluminum part, sure. Probably there's an edge or something there, yeah. <laughs> and this surface is, what'd you call it? This was like a Teflon. It's it's kind of just it's like a, a hard any kind of a um what you're used to is a hard uh, mouse pad, right? It's not a not a fabric style mouse pad, just right. a hard surface, right? Um, and it, it is pretty slick uh, compared, you know, the mouse obviously as you can see it just kind of like floating around over here and yeah. Well, it's you kind know. of sitting at an angle right now. It's, yep. That's what it's meant to be. And, and there are edges uh, at the bottom and at the right edge. Right. The uh, the housing actually comes up by about uh, an eighth of an inch. And, and that's it's to prevent this. Yeah, it's to prevent the well. It it'll, keeps it it'll from still flying. Try, off. you know. Right. But, yeah. Well, 
It hits it does, the side, it hits the bottom. Yep, it does still keep the mouse, you know, because you're going to have it on your lap, you're potentially kind of moving around a little. You might yeah. be typing on the keyboard and not using the mouse for a second. You don't want to just sliding right off. <laughs> I had that issue with, with the, a lot with, of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've, I tried some gaming on it. I actually wrote the article we put up on the site about it on it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you notice, uh, just the way it balances there, it tends to lean a little to the left with the full, with the full the, size keyboard, right? Yeah. And the keyboard weighs more than just the mousing side. And yeah. the mouse, right? Uh, so what that lets you get away with, I don't know if it's intentional or not, is if you want to type on it, the only way to really center the keyboard, if you want to do like dedicated typing where you're not so worried about the mouse, you the only, it's not really comfortable. Everything your arms. Are yes, you're kind left. of centered here on like the home page up, page yeah, down yeah. section, right? Yeah. So, so the way that you can shift that over is you just pick the laptop, lap dog up, and kind of shift it over on your lap, and even if you center, put the center of the device, which is the, the thicker part of the hump here. Yeah, it's, you can um, kind of see like it's not flat on the bottom. Right, on purpose. Right. So if you center that part of it on your right leg, yeah. for example, there's still enough weight on the left so that it doesn't really teeter. Okay. Um, and you can just, you know, you just kind of, I, I found myself naturally kind of having my right leg a little bit lower to compensate for the, the right. you know, thicker part in the center there. And, you know, it was very comfortable to type. Uh, I, I kind of had to lean back in the chair mm -hmm. to because it's meant to be like you're sitting on a couch for you to be comfortable. Yes. So if you find yourself you're not trying, generally sitting straight up, yeah. So in, initially I was doing that and trying to look at the display like a you know and and it just it got like tiring. But then as soon as I you know pretended I was on a couch, yeah, then it just everything was fine. Um, I, yeah. I mean, any issues in terms of like cable length or something here? Like, just once you get it installed the you first can, time, you yeah, can adjust it. Yeah, you can adjust it however you want. Uh, there's even, I mean, there's some space there. So if you want, like, we're gonna put it away or something, you can yeah. kind of just tuck the excess cable in there, I guess. Right. Um, it is a little bit cumbersome. Is like, what are you gonna do with your mouse when you try to put it away because it? That's if I had to if I had to pick a couple things for them to change, it yeah. would be some kind of either a like a magnet, or, yeah, a pocket a magnet or, something. or a pocket or something to hold the mouse in place so yeah. when you take it off to move it off the side of the couch. Um, I would like to see maybe this padded a little bit. It seems like if you were using this for a while, kind of the, the palm of your hand or the, or the wrist area might eventually kind of get irritated from the, the, the raised metal. I, I it's supposed it, to keep the mouse from falling off. I, it has I think a purpose. It just, uh, I think it just depends on how you're holding your mouse. I ended up not even really hitting that. Yeah. When I was because when it's on your lap, it's at a different angle. The, okay. Like we have it up on a table up high here. Right. Um, uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, it seems like a cool device. If you have, if you wanted to like sit on your floor, I guess, and put this on like your coffee table or something, you could take this pad off. It's oh, magnetic. Right. 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 You can just sit it on the table, use it there. I'd like to see um, some rubber feet on the bottom of that for maybe. As right, a, as an option right, right. or something, but um, the uh, cable, which I think was what sixteen feet. It's a, yeah, that's it's interesting. We had a question like that in the in the comments. And everything the cable that comes out out of here, the USB cable and power cable is is it's two cables, but they're they're together. They're, they're joined together. They're joined together. Yeah. It's sixteen feet. Mm -hmm. um, so you really that's that's a pretty good distance to get between wherever your PC is and your home theater yeah. to your to yeah. your couch. It, sh it should make it. And then um, the female end of the power connector. You get another cable to attach to it. That's probably what five more feet. Uh, yeah, to, yeah. To reach whatever to, to reach power like, strip you're going to use yeah, to, get to, to, power to plug strip. it in. But it, it is, you know, it, I, I could see it being convenient in a living room, like if you want to just be able to wind up that cable and take this and stick it somewhere. You just, you know, yank the plugs out of the back, yep. stick it on a shelf or something, get yep. it out of the way, and then when you want to, you know, bust out and play, then you can just unwind the cable real quick, and you don't have to reconnect <laughs> the stuff on the other end back to the rear of the PC or whatnot. Right. Yeah. Some of our long-term uh, uh, readers and viewers remember I had uh, my hacked solution was a uh, a hospital table tray yeah. that I used, modified by ripping off the wheels on the bottom of it and putting uh, what do you, those furniture mover sliders, kind of gluing those to the bottom of it so yep. it slid around the room. My wife is not <laughs> happy about this solution at all. Well, wife acceptance factor was zero. It was low. It was very low. Uh, this would be much better, right? Yep, and yep. and it was something I loved to do because I, I, at, I spent all day in front of a computer testing mm -hmm. computers, mm -hmm. and when I wanted to play games at home, I wanted to play on a PC, but I wanted to sit on my couch and do it, and that's how I really played through all of Skyrim. This would have made it... A much better uh, experience. And we we had uh, some other comments talking about like why don't you just use a Bluetooth thing or why don't you just use a wireless thing or some form. And you can, uh, but you do get more latency, right? Uh, Logitech even like there's been uh, you know lots of articles written about like the G900 is their wireless mouse that they're right, very right. proud of. But but 
that, and they don't use Bluetooth for that. They use their own special they use RF. kind of yeah. like RF protocol, right, in order to reduce latency because Bluetooth does have relatively high latency, especially yeah. if you're trying to do first-person shooting or anything like that. Sure. Anything Twitch kind of related gaming. Um, you know, you really want to go with something that's either wired or, you know, a very low latency yeah. kind of a link. And you can't get backlit devices like these devices are. Right. Um, with a Bluetooth connection or a wireless connection, unless, of course, you want a really big Konkin battery you pack could, in this thing. I mean, you could put a battery in here. It's big enough that you, you could. can do that. You're going to add weight to it, right? And, yeah. and it's going to sit on your legs or whatever. And, and then you'll have, have to, you'll have to charge it. In yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. So there's other complications for it. I, I think... This is kind of a good middle ground. Trust me, I, I think the idea of not having a cable running across the floor is would be the best of, of all worlds, right? Right. Um, so if, if, if Corsair's next version has kind of like a USB to RF or maybe we have Ygig as an option, like you have a Ygig dongle plugged into the back of your machine. and There is got, such a thing as wireless USB. Yeah, yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. But then you do have that that battery issue, right? Yep. So, and if you want to have things like RGB keyboards and RGB mice and all that stuff, it is going to it's going to use a little bit more juice. So this is actually available now. Mm -hmm. 120 bucks is pretty steep. It is for an accessory. But the build, like I haven't seen any other device built like this. Like yeah. It's, I mean, you're talking, you know, like anodized aluminum. It's just on the top. I'll give it that. The bottom part here is plastic. But honestly, this would be too heavy. If the whole thing was solid aluminum, right? It just it would be, just be too much aluminum to put in a thing, right? Yeah. Um, the the Couch Master, I don't remember the price offhand, but I remember it being expensive. Yes. It was probably more than 120 bucks. And it was really a lot more bulky, right? You had the two huge pads. Yeah. You, you know, basically one on either yeah. side. Yeah. And like I couldn't even imagine. It was a much trying larger to, thing than yeah, this. Yeah, like like trying to put that away quickly or anything. It would be it had impossible. To be, yeah, you're right. And it would ha it had to be larger because it had to support all kinds of different keyboards, right? Yeah. This is very much targeted a specific line of keyboard. Yep. Um, so, like, if, if you don't like Corsair keyboards, for whatever reason it happens to be, you're not going to be able to use this device. Like, right. you're not going to be able to plug in your, your Razer, your Logitech, or whatever it is, into this device, yep. probably. Um, but I, I'm, I like it. I think it's a pretty neat device to have uh, if you do a lot of PC gaming on, uh, on, a, on a home theater PC and you or don't want to use a controller anymore. Yeah. Right, like, and I think I think there's a there's a pretty big audience for that. So, I, 120 bucks is maybe a little bit more than I would have liked to see. 100 bucks, 75 bucks, obviously that would have been great. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, you know, a couple little quirks here and there, but I think it's pretty neat. Alan has uh, his full write up up on the website at pcper.com. You can find links to that in the show description here as well. Uh, and we'll be back soon. Thanks, guys. See ya. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com/pcper.